In his 40-year career, William Higgins built a catalog of over 3,000 films and is considered by many of his peers as one of the most influential and beloved gay porn directors of all time. On this episode, we're going to cover William Higgins. A gay porn director and founder of Catalina Video, who immediately established a reputation of casting young, fresh, handsome, hung models in full-length features with reliable storylines, introducing the world to Kip Knoll and John King, to name a few. This is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I definitely helped to get off. Before we continue, please don't forget that you can help this channel and this audiovisual podcast by clicking the subscribe button, clicking the like button, and selecting the bell icon so you can be notified every time I publish a new video. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think. William Higgins was born George William Fisher Jr. on December 19, 1942, in Oklahoma and raised in Texas. In high school, Higgins developed an interest in filmmaking and photography. Part of what led to Higgins' career in filmmaking was a foreign film he sought out while on visit to upstate New York. The film was I Am Curious, Yellow, a 1967 film by Vilgot Holman. Higgins was running a stained glass business in Houston where he taught housewives how to make stained glass decorations for their homes. At this point in his life, Higgins was approaching 35 and had never had sex with a man or a woman. He explored his sexuality by going to theaters to watch gay porn. Higgins thought the movies he was watching were so bad that he decided to, you guessed it, move to California and start trying to make videos himself. To prepare himself, he bought a copy of Stephen Ziplow's recently published The Filmmaker's Guide to Pornography, which provided a checklist of various sexual acts that should be included in straight porn films, along with instructions on how best to film them. From there, Higgins purchased a second-hand 16mm movie camera and began cruising the local gay clubs like the Midtown Spa, a popular bathhouse in Houston. In early 1978, Higgins set out for San Francisco, but only got as far as Los Angeles. He met a man who would help him produce the film that would become A Married Man, starring Jack Wrangler. The experience was horrendous enough for Higgins to almost call it quits after just starting his directing career. Discouraged after the manager of the Adonis Theater refused to play his film, Higgins went to the 55th Street Playhouse where he struck a deal and A Married Man was a modest hit. Higgins returned to LA, took a job as a clerk at a bathhouse in the San Fernando Valley, and settled in Venice Beach. While living in Venice Beach, Higgins couldn't help but notice all the young, half-naked men sunbathing, surfing, and roller skating. He thought to himself this would be an interesting movie, and began to shoot footage with film that was left over from a married man. The footage he shot sat on a shelf until Monroe Beeler, the owner of Century Theater in California, reached out to him and said he really liked The Married Man and was hoping Higgins would make another film. Higgins agreed and put together the film that would be called The Boys of Venice, the film that would launch his career. The Boys of Venice was a box office success and decisively launched William Higgins' career. Higgins set up Laguna Pacific to handle production and Catalina to handle distribution and went on to become one of the most prolific gay porn filmmakers in the United States. Over the next five years, he made 20 movies and set new production standards for gay pornography, single-handedly codifying the California aesthetic called the William Higgins tradition. The William Higgins tradition was based off of Jay Bryant, a contemporary of Higgins and his publication Golden Boys. In fact, one of Higgins' most successful films, Class Reunion, is modeled directly after Jay Bryan's pool party. Right. That's it, I'm sold. It's, got, it's mine, I'm I gotta have this. What would you have to do to get that thing? Fuck! <laughs> Higgins launched several modeling careers, among them Kip Knoll, Leo Ford, J.W. King, and Derek Stanton, just to name a few. In 1988, Higgins left the United States. Now, there are many theories as to why he left the United States, including one theory where Higgins murdered one of his young models by throwing him off a cliff. That didn't happen. 
What did happen was one of Higgins' talent scouts took pictures of an underage teen. The film was developed by the FBI posing as a film lab, something that was not uncommon at the time. Higgins' house was raided and surrounded by police cars, and after being interviewed and processed, Higgins and the talent scout were released. Higgins then went on a world tour with his talent agent and left for Australia, Thailand, Germany, Spain, Portugal, and Amsterdam. During this time and back in the US, the charges related to the incident were dropped, but by that point, Higgins decided he would stay abroad in search of a better legal environment for gay erotica. Higgins settled in Amsterdam and opened Drake's, a club with a variety of activities, including male hustlers, dark rooms, glory holes, porn, and an S&M basement. And food service. Things are very different in other countries. While there, Higgins found it harder to shoot since men in European countries were not as eager to have sex on camera just for money. Around this time, Higgins would meet two Czech men that began to work at the bar as escorts. These two escorts told him he will find men willing to work in the Czech Republic. Higgins, excited by the prospect of beautiful young gay men, moved to Prague and quickly established himself there, opening a Drake's and getting back into filmmaking. Higgins had recently sold Catalina, and along with it, his right to the name William Higgins, during which time he began making films under the name Wim Hof, and making films for Dirk Yates and later All Worlds Video. A technicality gave him the use of the name William Higgins again. By this point, Higgins noticed the saturation of the market and the decline in profit. He also saw a huge potential with the internet. So he started his site, Euro Military, which would later morph into William Higgins. Have you been a good boy all year? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. Next. Have you been good all year? Yes. Well, I'm not so sure. Yes. Okay, I'll believe you just this one. So, now a special present for everyone. In hindsight, William Higgins didn't grasp the magnitude of what he was doing. When he began his career, there were a handful of producers on the West Coast and East Coast producing gay porn. By the time he was inducted into the gay VNs, the industry had flourished into the well-oiled juggernaut it is today. In an age when directors and performers come and go, from visual iteration to iteration, Higgins was one of the very few who maintained relevance over decades. On December 21st, 2019, George William Fisher Jr., William Higgins, died of a heart attack at the age of 77 in Amsterdam. Higgins' career began in the 1970s, pushing the envelope of what is and is not protected by the First Amendment of the United States. He would go on to be recognized for a signature look, as well as run headfirst into the dot-com era, where his sights have found a formidable home. Here's to the hours upon hours of pleasure William Higgins has given the world. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I'm your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn is available on every podcast directory, as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on X, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram. And if you like what you're watching or listening to and want to be a part of the creative process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help support this audiovisual podcast and YouTube channel, and I can continue making content like you've just enjoyed. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers. Cheers.